This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 2-2 pitch, head ball hit deep in a right field. It's at the track, at the wall, and it is gone. Here's Jason Shepard. Good afternoon, BYU baseball fans. Welcome back into Albuquerque, New Mexico. We are at Santa Ana Star Field, where today the 6-5 and five BYU Cougars take on the 7-3 and three New Mexico Lobos in the fourth and final game of a four-game series. Jason Shepard and Tuckett Slade with you here from Albuquerque. Tuck, a found fantastic bounce-back game for the BYU Cougars after falling 4 to nothing and dropping the first two games of this four-game series. The BYU baseball team came back with a vengeance in the second game of a doubleheader. It featured many hits, but one massive hit from Jaron Hall, which was a grand slam, and BYU wins 17 hits, with 18 runs, it's 18-9 to nine victory for BYU, and uh, the confidence was back, certainly. Absolutely. No, it's a big-time win to get in the win column against these guys and have a chance to, to leave here today with a split of the series. But this young team, that's something that we'll take. Absolutely. BYU will be facing number 44, Nathaniel Garley, the senior pitcher from right here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, 6'3", 230. Well, and to give you a little bit of backtrack on that, it's his, he's, it's his first appearance of the year, which he was a rotation arm last year for him as a junior. He was one of their, their starting pitchers, and so he hasn't thrown yet this year. Not sure why, but uh, he's a pretty good little arm. Well, and we mentioned Jaron Hall, and to nobody's surprise, he's leading off the game. He'll play defensively in right field. He will lead things off for BYU when we get underway in just a moment. Batting second, and in the playing, or excuse me, in the designated hitter position, batting second, number seven, Hobbs Nyberg, and then Mitch McIntyre, wearing number six, will hit in the three spot in the order. But Jaron Hall, leading the team in average, hitting 545 as a home run, which, as we mentioned, is a grand slam, a double, and six runs batted in in very limited playing time. He's been unbelievable. And that's an 11 at bats, official at bats. So. See if he can start us off to a big hot start again today. Absolutely. We are about to get underway with the first pitch. Nathaniel Gardley, swing and a miss. Actually, just got a piece of it. Did Jaron Hall, fouls it back. and We're underway here from Santa Ana Star Field. Yeah, I, I really liked Jaron's approach this weekend. Just really confident up there and seeing the ball up. And his the first ball that he sees that he likes, he's taking a good hack at it, and he's been successful doing that. Asked him last night on the... Uh, post-game show how confident he was he said feeling pretty confident at the plate i would say that's pretty accurate yeah when you're when you're <laughs> six for 11 to start the season with a, a double a bomb and six ribbies can't beat that and two walks Absol and a hit by pitch absolutely one one count to the leadoff man jaron hall fourth and final game of this series against the lobos the one one pitch from garley almost hit him he absolutely misses for ball two now two balls and one strike beautiful Saturday afternoon just a light breeze right now supposed to pick up as the the day goes on but hopefully that gets pushed back a few hours yeah sun is shining mostly clear skies a few clouds surrounding the ballpark the 2-1 pitch to Hall called strike two and now the count is even at two balls and two strikes a good slider right there for called strike two go up there two and two count if you're Jeremy just battle find a way to put a ball in play Garley delivers the 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss. And Jaron Hall strikes out for the first out here in the top of the first inning. Ah, pretty good little slider running away right there. It's tough as a leadoff hitter sometimes when, you know, this guy doesn't have a ton of, he hasn't thrown one pitch this year. And so you don't have a ton of information on him. Um, and you've never seen him before. So tough back there and strikes Jaron out. Don't forget the home opener for BYU baseball coming up on Tuesday night at Miller Park taking on the Wolverines of Utah Valley. Hope to see you out. The game will be on BYU TV and on BYU Radio, so we're going to have you covered. First pitch to Hobbs Nyberg. Showing bunt and take strike one. Bring a blanket and a parka and come out and yes. enjoy a, a rivalry game. I understand it's supposed to be in the low 60s today in Provo, but then drop down about 20 degrees for the next couple of days. Of course they would do that. <laughs> One out, nobody on. 0-1 count. The pitch to Nyberg. Fouls it out of play, and Hobbs now behind. No balls and two strikes. Hobbs, the DH once again today. 
with a double, a triple, hitting 267 coming into play. Hobbs has been a nice little spark this weekend. Yes, has a pretty has. good little weekend. No balls and two strikes. Nobody on and one out. The 0-2 pitch from Garley. Misses outside. One and two now. After the game against UVU, the team back out on the road. Fly out Wednesday. Ultimately ending up in Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The 1-2 pitch to Hobbs. Misses low. Two balls and two strikes. That's yeah, going to be a fun series. It's always nice when you get to face a top 25 Big 12 team that's been in the College World Series the last couple of years and is a really talented group. Absolutely. One of those programs that in college baseball you certainly uh, are aware of. Two balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Garley delivers the 2-2. Hobbs gets a piece and fouls it off in front of the BYU dugout. Count yeah. remains 2-2. Two two. little change up right there running away. Hobbs is able just to get to the end of the bat to foul that back. Two balls, two strikes, and one out here in the top of the first. Just underway from Santa Ana Star Field. Garley delivers. This is low, and now a full count to Hobbs. Yeah, so far, both our first two hitters of the game have seen quite a few pitches. So Jaron was able to see five. Now you're up to five or six pitches here for Hobbs. Full count now to Hobbs Nyberg. The payoff pitch from Garley. Yeah, this is away, and now it's a walk with one out here in the top of the first. Good at bat there by Hobbs, taking that change up down and taking the walk. Love seeing that. Defensively behind Nathaniel Garley in left field, number 26, Adam Schneider. Center, number 13, Connor Mang. And in right, number 29, Harry Fullerton. Third base is Kyler Castillo. At short, Kimwell Thomas Rivera. Justin Watari, number five at second base, first base. Kyle Landers, and behind the plate today, number six, Jarrett Gonzalez. Your boy Shane Podsednik has not fared well against the Cougars, so Gonzalez will get the start at catcher. First pitch, right up the middle, but a nice defensive play by the second baseman. McIntyre thrown out at first base, and that's a double play. And the Cougars are retired in the top of the first inning. Bottom of the first coming up after this from Albuquerque on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Jason Shepard. Easton Walker on the mound today for the BYU Cougars. Comes in with an ERA of 5.40, record of no wins, one loss, five strikeouts on the season. And Easton facing a lineup that will lead off with number five, Justin Watari. Seen him in that spot in every game that BYU has played New Mexico. The two spot, Kyle Landers and Kyler Castillo hitting third in the order. Those are the three scheduled hitters here in the bottom of the first. The first pitch from Easton. Taken for strike one. Yeah, and this Watari is a good little leadoff hitter. He just puts the ball in play and finds a way to get on base. Absolutely. The 0-1 pitch to Watari. Nice inside pitch. It's the strike zone. And Easton now ahead of Watari. No balls and two strikes. That pitch completely fooled Watari. The 0-2 pitch from Easton. This is low. Making his first start. We saw him in his first action last night, but Chase Taylor, the freshman from West Jordan, getting his first start as a BYU Cougar today. Yeah, exciting, fun time for Chase. He works his tail off, and with A. Valdez's injury last night, he's able to uh, get a chance to start here. Absolutely. Pretty cool moment for Chase and his family. Watari pops that ball up down the left field line. Latham there makes the play, and Watari is retired for the first out here in the bottom of the first inning. Defensively for the BYU Cougars, I just mentioned Hayden Latham in his normal spot in left field. Center field, number six, Mitch McIntyre in right field, Jaron Hall. Third base, Brock Watkins. It's short, Andrew Pintar, Peyton Cole playing second base. The freshman, Cutter Clausen at first base. And already mentioned, number 44, Chase Taylor getting his first career start. 
as a BYU Cougar behind the plate catching Easton Walker. Kyle Landers with a base hit. Lined right over Pintar at short and into left field. Landers has the Lobos first hit and with one out, he's at first base. Now batting, number 23, third baseman, Kyler Castillo. Third baseman, Kyler Castillo will bat third for the Lobos with one out, one on. The Lobos with their red helmets, their white pants with red pinstripes, but they've got that teal top, which I actually think is a really cool look that has Lobos across the chest. It's it's a unique, different look, but I actually kind of like that. Yeah, it is definitely. A little turquoise down here in the land of enchantment. Yeah. First pitch to Castillo from Easton Walker. Called strike one. BYU in the navy blue tops and the, the gray pants. Are there any plans for BYU to wear royal on the road at all? Uh, possibly, but... Uh We've not, not, we not seen it yet. Yeah. 0-1 pitch to Castillo. Fouled off. Easton now ahead. No balls and two strikes. I'm going to be covered either way. This morning, I found a really nice pair of shoes that's both navy and royal blue. So I'm covered either way. No balls, two strikes. And yes, of course, they are Nike. I'm a Nike guy. One out, one on. No balls, two strikes. The 0-2 pitch, Castillo able to check the swing. They'll appeal down to first. It says he did not go around. One ball and two strikes to Kyler Castillo. Landers at first. Getting a base hit. A throw over by Walker to first. Landers diving back. Bottom of the first inning, BYU did not score in the top of the inning. Yesterday, they began game two of the doubleheader, scoring three runs in the top of the first in route to 18 total runs. One, two pitch, misses away. Now two balls and two strikes to Castillo. Connor Mang on deck for the Lobos. Well, this is definitely a hit and run spot right here. They like to do that with this team. He runs well at first, and Castillo handles the bat well, so look for action right here. Throw over to first, and that throw a little bit closer. Landers alertly back to first base. 2-2 two -two count, one out, one on in the bottom of the first. Castillo at the plate facing Easton Walker, the junior from Pleasant Grove. Easton with the 2-2 two -two pitch, and you called it. It was a hit and run right to short. Pintar gloves, steps on second, throws to first. And gets the double play. The Lobos are retired in the bottom of the first inning. No scores. We head to the top of the second from Albuquerque on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Top of the second inning, no score from Albuquerque, BYU. And the New Mexico Lobos wrapping up their four-game set. And actually, this is the final game of six games these teams have played since the start of the season the Lobos taking the first two of this four game set BYU winning last night looking to get a split with a victory today Hayden Latham will lead off the top of the second inning facing Nathaniel Garley the first pitch to Hayden taken for strike one I'm always curious on like a day like this where it's you know it's a leap year it's the 29th we're going to see anything crazy today. I hope so. Like crazy offensive like, outburst like again? Cr like crazy score for BYU? I like it. Breaking ball in for strike two. Garley ahead of the batter. Latham, no balls, two strikes. I wonder what type of pitch count Garley can go today with being his first appearance of the year. 0-2 pitch. This is low, and now one ball and two strikes to Hayden Latham. And the little breeze that we do have today, it's actually blowing the opposite of yes. what we've seen. We have seen from left to right when there has been a breeze yep. this entire series. Now it's from right to left. One ball, two strikes. Garley sets and delivers to Latham. Swing and a miss. 
throw down to first. And it'll be a strikeout of Hayden Latham. And that's one away here in the top of the second. The freshman, Cutter Clausen. Getting the start once again at first base. The freshman from Laguna Beach, California. Hitting 444 with a double and an RBI. Yeah, he's had a really good weekend. Had a huge at-bat for us against Cal Poly in that final game. First pitch to Cutter. Gets the call on the outside. Or rather, he did call that a ball. I thought he called that a strike. He did. Okay, but they've got the it wrong. Scoreboard, yeah, the scoreboard wrong. has ball one and no strikes, but it is actually 0-1. Hey, they fixed it. They listened to you. There we go. The 0-1 pitch on its way to Cutter. Ground ball to second base. Watari for the Landers at first. And now quickly in the top of the second, there are two away. Andrew Pintar had a nice double play to end the bottom of the first. Will now be the batter. Well, Andrew had a pretty good day yesterday. Yes, he did. Yeah, what, had about four hits in that last game? He was phenomenal. He and Jaron Hall were pretty much automatic yesterday. Pintar hitting in the sixth spot in the order today. First pitch from Garley inside, ball one to the freshman. Pintard leads the team in hits. He has 14. Hitting 333 with four runs batted in. Two outs, nobody on. The 1-0 pitch. Inside corner. One ball and one strike to Pintar. It's a good spot right there. Throwing that fastball inside. When you can command the inner half, it makes it real tough for the hitters. Because then you can't just cheat on the outside sliders and fastballs. Two outs in the top of the second. Nobody on. The 1-1 pitch to Pintar. Strike two. They definitely got that breaking ball going today. And for a called strike, he's doing a really good job so far in the early innings here. Doesn't seem to be rattled in the situation. Well, he's been a starter, so he knows how to do that. It's just... The 1-2 pitch to Pintar. This is low. Two balls and two strikes. Last night's game, in which BYU won 18-9, that was a, a much-needed victory and, an, and a nice boost. You can feel that today, the enthusiasm around the team, the energy is just great. Absolutely. Two outs, 2-2 two -two count to Pintar. Garley delivers. Pintar cannot check his swing, and they'll ring him up. Three up, three down in the top of the second. Bottom of the inning after this. No score from Albuquerque on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball alongside Tuckett Slade. Here's Jason Shepard. Mang, Fullerton, and Reyes do up the four, five, and six hitters for the New Mexico Lobos here in the bottom of the second inning. No score. Lobos with one hit. Facing Easton Walker. Walker's first pitch to Mang right down the middle for strike one. Win. Picking up just a little bit, but certainly nothing significant like the First game on Thursday night. The 0-1 pitch, high and inside, one ball and one strike. But you said around 1 o'clock is when it's expected to pick up a little bit. The 1-1 pitch, outside corner. One ball and two strikes now to Connor Mang, the center fielder. Yeah, it's a high of 66 today, so it's going to be a... Strong south wind coming in. A little, a little, but still feel cool to us up here. In the shade. Out of two boy. pitch outside called strike three. And outside. Mang is the first out of the inning here in the bottom of the second. Yeah, it's always nice to get that leader. Harry He's Fullerton, the right fielder. Right fielder Harry will be the batter Fullerton. with one out, nobody on. He's had a great series this, yes. this weekend. Just seems like every ball he's put in play is hit is hit extremely hard and finding a hole. Well, and we've talked about it on the broadcast. Not only what he does at the plate, but defensively in right field, he's he's been a problem for BYU certainly. He really has. Outside for ball one to Fullerton. Harry Fullerton, the six foot, two hundred pound junior from Sydney, Australia. There's number 29, facing number 9, Easton Walker. Swing and a miss. 
A little off speed there. One Ooh. ball and one strike to Fullerton. I would love to hear the story of how they found him. <laughs> right? It would be a good recruiting trip that will go on. Look, I, look I'm recruiting. Yeah. i got to go to Sydney. So you can learn your accent. <laughs> it's one of the two things I want. 1-1 one, one pitch outside. Two balls and one strike. How about you pick things that are actually realistic? <laughs> okay, we'll I'm just, gonna, we'll I'll be honest. Those, those dream goals? Be, being larger in stature is probably not going to happen at my age now. Misses away. Now three balls and one strike. But I could learn. There are linguistics mm -hmm. coaches yeah. that I could learn an Australian accent if I chose to go down that path. Oh, so you're lazy. No, it's probably just because I don't want to pay for it. Makes sense. 3-1 and a swing and a miss. Now 3-2 and two to Fullerton. I'm not lazy. I'm just cheap. Yeah, well. <laughs> no comment. No comment. Three balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on. The payoff pitch. Grand ball passed, a diving Peyton Cole. Got a glove on it, but it bounced over and into right field. That'll be a base hit yeah, and for I think Harry that, Fullerton. I think that's a ball that if uh, Peyton was to watch that on film, he would see that if he just would have kept running and not tried to dive, he would have had enough time to feel that on his feet and still make the play because he was playing so deep into the outfield on that pole side. But... Uh, Dove and it, it basically bounced over his glove yeah. on the dive. The batter, the designated hitter, number nine, Ediberto Reyes. One out, runner on first. Same situation in the bottom of the first inning. We'll see if it ends in the same result as a double play. First pitch low for ball one from Walker. Reyes. Asking for a little pine tar. Well, this series we've already seen a, a swing and miss where the bat was released and thrown into the dugout. So it's just probably just saying, hey, guys, I want to protect the dugout here. Yeah, landed in BYU's dugout. Luckily, everybody was paying attention. One ball, no strikes to Reyes, the designated hitter, hitting sixth in the order. 1-0 count. Walker delivers. Misses outside. Now 2-0 to Reyes. Might see uh, Fullerton at first take off. Another, another hit and run type count right here. Especially with the left handed hitter, he's shielding the runner from the catcher. The 2 0 pitch. This is low and now 3 0. Fullerton is at first, one out. And Walker has fallen behind the hitter. Reyes, three balls and no strikes. We are scoreless in the bottom of the second inning here from Santa Ana Star Field. The 3-0 pitch from Walker. Uh-oh. And he was swinging. That ball is hit deep into the gap. Hits the top of the wall in left center. And Fullerton is all the way at home sliding in. That's an RBI double for Ediberto Reyes. And the Lobos jump on top first, one nothing in the bottom of the second. Yeah, 3-0 swinging and got a fastball built high, elevated on the outer half, and he just went with it and was about, about a half a foot from hitting a two-run home run right there. The ball just continued to carry, but like you said, not enough that it got out of the ballpark. And now we've said this a lot, you know, this series – now you just limit the damage. Yeah, it's all about now you, now you just keep it to a one-run deficit. Yeah, minimize the inning. Swing and a foul by Kimwell Thomas Rivera. The shortstop. Inning seventh in the lineup. Reyes is at second. After hitting the RBI double. one nothing Lobos here with one out. In the bottom of the second. Ground ball to Pintar at short. Gloves and throws out Thomas Rivera. Reyes advances to third, but now two away here in the bottom of the second. Yeah, Pintar maybe had a chance batting, to throw six, out Cassie, Reyes Jared at third, Gonzalez. but uh, you just want to make sure you get the easy out because yep. if you don't get that out there, now it's first and third, one out, and it's an inning can turn huge. So smart decision there just to throw it to first, and now you have two outs with Lopez up, right? Oh, uh, this is uh, Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Gonzalez yep, so. the catcher, number six, Jarrett Gonzalez. 
Gonzalez, the junior from San Antonio, Texas. First pitch to Gonzalez. Misses, I guess, high. Just a little high. One ball and no strikes. Reyes is at third, two outs. The batter, the catcher, Jarrett Gonzalez. The 1 0 pitch. Strike one. It's all about minimizing. That's the key to this game. Keep it to one run here. Let your offense go back out and try to match. The left fielder, Adam Schneider, on deck for the Lobos. But there are two outs and a runner on third. 1 1 count to Gonzalez. Good pitch. Strike two. One ball and two strikes. Peyton Cole's playing deep into shallow right field. Everyone's at normal depth. Outfielders are normal depth. One two count. Put him away right here. Walker with the one two to Gonzalez. Get foul. Line foul down the right field line. Try to throw a slider away there, and he actually hung it over the plate. Gonzalez had a pitch to hit right there. Luckily for us, he fouled it away. The junior, Easton Walker, getting the start today. Wrapping up the four-game series here in Albuquerque. The one-two pitch to Gonzalez. Come get it, Latham. Hit into the gap in left center. Latham moves to his left, makes the play, and a runner is stranded at third base. One run does score for the Lobos. New Mexico leading 1-0, heading to the top of the third on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network. one nothing New Mexico as we begin the top of the third inning. Watkins, Taylor, and Cole. The seven, eight, and nine hitters due up for the BYU Cougars here. As we begin the top of the third from Santa Ana Star Field. Jason Shepard and Tuckett Slade with you on the broadcast. We appreciate you tuning in to BYU Baseball. 13, <laughs> they announced number 13, Cy Nielsen, which is accurate That's that Cy's number. Yeah. number is 13. However, is Brock Watkins. Swing and a miss, the first pitch. It is Brock Watkins wearing number 13 because this jersey is the one where his normal number two does not exist. The 0-1 pitch from Garley. Ground ball, chopped foul. Now no balls and two strikes. Oh, 2 just got a battle here. Cy Nielsen, his ears probably perked up. Wait, am, am, I, am I up? Yeah, he would <laughs> love it. <laughs> no balls, two strikes. The 0-2 pitch to Watkins. Get down. Hit into left field, and it will fall. That'll be a base hit for Brock Watkins. And the leadoff man is on in the top of the third for the BYU Cougars. Ah, good job there. 0-2 got a breaking ball that was elevated. He missed his spot, and he's able to get on top of it and line it into left for a leadoff single. And now Chase Taylor, who got his first start as a BYU Cougar behind the plate today. And he's got some familiar faces yeah, in the cool. crowd today. You, you see his dad in the crowd. He was able to fly in this morning to to see his first college start. That's pretty awesome. First pitch to Chase, low for ball one. Yeah, Coach Littlewood likes to post the lineups early, and with the injury to Abe, you kind of knew you might go back to Cowden or give Chase his first opportunity. And uh, Cowden had to basically catch in all three games leading up to today, and you, you hate to wear a guy out, so you give Chase an opportunity. And uh, dad flew in this morning to see his first start. That's pretty awesome. The 1-0 pitch to Taylor, swing and a miss. The count now 1-1 one one to the freshman. And Chase is a fun prospect here. He's a kid who, he has a pop. He really does. He he gets the ball elevated here. He could leave it out of this yard big time, especially with that wind kind of breezing that way. Absolutely. Peyton Cole on deck. 1-1 one, one count to Taylor. Such a hardworking kid, too. Runner on first, nobody out. Garley delivers. Strike two. Now Garley ahead of Chase Taylor, one ball and two strikes. Well, now you get into battle mode, right? One, two count. No, nobody out, runner at first. 
find a way to fight here and hit a ground ball hopefully through the four hole here and, and let Watkins run first to third. Garley sets. Quick throw over to first. Watkins diving back safe. One run on three hits for the Lobos. No runs on one hit for the Cougars in the top of the third inning. Watkins with a base hit, stands at first base, nobody out. And a 1-2 count to Chase Taylor. Garley delivers the 1-2, swing and a miss. And Chase was out in front of that. Now one away here as he strikes out. The batter will be Peyton Cole, the Cougar second baseman. Now batting, number 23. They went to a changeup right there and out in front of that, swung through it. It's a good located pitch right there by Garley. Garley, 6'3", 230, a senior from right here in Albuquerque. Now a runner on first and one out. Peyton Cole at the plate. The first pitch to Peyton. Swing and a miss, strike one. Lots and lots of change-ups right now. You can tell he's confident with that pitch. Jaron Hall on deck. one nothing Lobo lead in the top of the third. Garley with the 0-1. This is away. One ball and one strike to Peyton Cole. And that's the tough thing about uh, hitting is that, that changeup. A good changeup is that equalizer. I mean, it makes it so tough on the hitters because you're gearing up for fastball, trying to be on time, and it comes out of the same slot, the same type of angle. You think it's a fastball, and then you start to swing, and uh, it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike, one out. Garley delivers the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss for strike two. Peyton Cole, part of that freshman infield, starting. We've got a freshman starting at catcher, first, second, third, and short. Pretty impressive. Yes, it is. It's all about battling here. 1-2 count. Garley delivers to Cole. Good, Low for good, ball two. Good. And that's what it comes down to, Shep. Last night when we were able to put up the, what, 18, 17 hits? 17 hits, 18 runs. We just battled like crazy, you know. Had deep counts, and then we were when we were on two strikes, we put balls in play, and a lot of them fell for hits. Two balls and two strikes. Garley delivers. And that's a strikeout of Peyton Cole on the second out of the inning. Back to the top of the order for BYU, Jaron Hall, who struck out in the first inning. Now batting. We'll bat with two outs and a runner on first base. Well, it's a steady dose of breaking balls and change-ups right now. Second time through, you've, you've all seen them pretty much every pitch because he's thrown both of them to every hitter. Hopefully you can make an adjustment your second time through and uh, get a knock. Hall awaiting the first pitch from Garley. And it's released. Strike one to Jaron. Jaron will be back with football as spring football gets underway. I think it starts next week. It some does. Of their, some of their practices. I got an email from uh, Brett Pine with BYU Football uh, giving me the schedule on what the media availability will be next week. So it is it is upon us. Two outs, runner on first. No balls, one strike to, to Jaron Hall. Gets a piece, fouls it off. And now Jaron behind, no balls and two strikes. A little slider for a st taken strike for strike one, and then another slider that's fouled back. He struck him out with the slider, the first at bat. Probably going to throw a slider here. <laughs> <laughs> Chances are probably pretty good. He might try to elevate a fastball here to blow it by him, but uh, most likely goes to breaking ball. No balls, two strikes, two outs. A runner on first. Garley taking his time. And now delivers the 0-2. Jaron Hall cannot hold up. He'll swing through and strike out. After a leadoff single, BYU unable to score. Bottom of the third from Santa Ana Star Field next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 
This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Jason Shepard. Adam Schneider looks to strike one from Easton Walker. Now the 0-1 pitch. Lined in the center field. McIntyre continues to go back but makes the catch. Nice job by Mitch to track that ball. and It just kept going. Quickly won away here. Yeah, it did. Five. I, I It Second surprised me, and I, I think it surprised five. Mitch, but he was able to get an eye on it and made the play. And The number nine hitter, Schneider, is retired. One away here. Now back to the top of the order. Justin Watari will bat with one out and nobody on here in the bottom of the third with the Lobos leading one nothing. Way outside for ball one to Watari. Justin, flat out to left field. Yeah, these are the key guys. You get these guys, you got to get them out because their RBI guys come up behind them, and it's been hard to get those guys out today. A liner into center field will fall in front of McIntyre. That's a base hit for Watari those with are, one out. Those are so tough as an outfielder because they have that top spin line drive. And if First Mitch goes 100% at it and tries Lander. to make a dive and he doesn't make that play, it's a triple or maybe even inside the parker. Absolutely. So, and we've seen speed out of Watari. Yeah. Well, now you just try to get you a ground ball double play right here. Seems like uh, Easton's been really good at getting the first guy out of the inning and then the second guy always gets a hit. So let's get a double play ball and get back in the dugout. One on, one out. Laser. Yeah, laser right up the middle by Landers. Watari will stop at second. And that's back-to-back -back base hits for the Lobos. Watari and Landers, and now with one out, now runners at first and second. Kyler the third baseman, Kyler Castillo, who grounded into a double play in the first inning. Well, Easton has given up four hits, and all four of them have been hit hard. He hasn't missed too many barrels today. This is a big spot here in the game, in a one-run ball game, with one out here in the bottom of the third that he's really looking for a ground ball double play, and Castillo did it last time, right? Yeah, and Castillo grounded into a in double first play. first inning, so we're looking for that again right here to get back in the dugout. One nothing lead for the Lobos. We're in the bottom of the third. One out, two on. Lobos at first and second. First pitch to Castillo, Ooh. misses away. And Easton wanted that one. Yeah, and Easton needs that pitch. Easton's a guy that likes to, he's kind of the old, like, Greg Maddox-type pitcher, right? He doesn't have the velo that's going to blow up by you. He's, he locates and keeps you off balance, and he needs to have that corner called. Five hits already for the Lobos. The 1-0 pitch to Castillo. Looks at strike one. Now one ball and one strike. No surprise that the Saturday game brings out the largest crowd yeah, we've seen crowd. here at really good Santa crowd. Ana Starfield. Lots of BYU blue to our left. 1-1 one, one pitch in the dirt. Now two balls and one strike. We'll be hunting a fastball right here. you got to locate. Keep the ball down and get your ground ball right here. Lobos at first and second. One out. 2-1 two, count to the third baseman, Kyler Castillo. Back-to-back -back singles after getting one out. Easton with the 2-1. Ground ball to the shortstop, and Pintar gloved it but did not make a throw. It looked like he had an opportunity to throw and get the force out at third. I don't know if he couldn't get the ball out of his glove. But, but what had happened is Brock didn't get to the bag. Brock took a step to his left and didn't get to the bag, so by the time he wanted to throw it to him, nobody would have been there, so he just had to eat it. I would have liked to see him try to throw that ball to first just because Castillo doesn't run well. He had time to still throw it to first, but because he looked to third first, he didn't have time and gets an infield single because of it. And It just could turn into a huge inning here. Now with bases loaded and one out, you need a ground ball double play ball right here. The first pitch to Connor Mang looks at strike one. It's been back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back singles after getting the first out in the bottom of the third. So this is a huge spot here, Shep. This is where the Lobos can really create a bunch of momentum and blow this thing apart here with a big double. One out and a no one count to Connor Mang. Easton delivers the 0-1. Good, good. Fouled back by Mang, and now Walker jumps ahead of the batter. No balls and two strikes. 
Well, being able to get a maybe a strikeout here for the second out of the inning would be massive. Yeah, strikeout would be absolutely You'd huge. love the double play, yeah. certainly. But if you can get a strikeout, get to two outs. Just looking for an out that will not score that run. One nothing lead. The 0-2 pitch to Mang. Fouled off to the screen. The count remains. No balls and two strikes. Try to go fastball up and in right there. Mang just barely fouled it back. The voice you just heard is the voice of Connor Mang's mom. We've had some fun talking with her over the last couple of days. 0-2 pitch. Misses outside. Taylor with a nice block. Does bounce away, but not far enough that anybody could move. Nice job by Chase. Yeah, big spot, big pitch right here. One, two, you go to your best pitch right now looking for the strikeout or the weak ground ball for a double play. One ball, two strike count. One out, bases loaded. Bottom of the, the third inning. The one, two pitch. Lined in the center field. The second out of the inning is there. The runners will advance. Watari will score from third. And the runner from second will advance to third. It's now 2-0 Lobos with two outs and runners now on the corners. Yeah, Easton wanted to bury that pitch there right and just left it Harry elevated enough Fullerton. to where Connor Mang was able to just one-hand it and hit the, the weak fly ball into center, but just far enough to easily going to score the runner from third. So now we talk about minimizing, right? Minimize, minimize, minimize. This is a huge spot here again for Easton to keep that runner on third from scoring. Fullerton in the second inning had a base hit, but now two away. Landers tagged from second and is now at third. So runners on the corners, two outs. And now a 2 nothing lead for New Mexico. And that's where that miscommunication two batters ago comes up huge because had Pintar been able to go to third to get the force, right, that fly, that fly out would have been the third out and no run score. Walker, the first pitch to Fullerton. Taken by Fullerton, strike one. Two runs on six hits for the Lobos. Two outs. Walker trying to get out of the inning. The 0-1 pitch, ground ball to Pintar. He bobbles it at short. Throw over to first, a bobble by Cutter Clausen cannot make the play, and Landers will score from third base, and it's now 3-0 New Mexico. Yeah, the ball was smoked right at Pintar. He, he, he wore it off the chest and then was able to field it, but then on the first grab, he couldn't quite grab it. He grabbed it again and tried to rush the throw, threw it in the dirt, and Cutter tried to save it and pick it, but just barely came out of his glove as he was trying to pick up, and they get another run. Ah, it's frustrating. Two mistakes now in the infield that cost us two runs this inning. Now 3-0 lead for the Lobos. The batters, the designated hitter, Eddieberto Reyes. And Reyes hit a double off the wall in the second inning that scored their first run, so it's a dangerous hitter. First pitch inside, strike one to Reyes. Still two outs. Runners at first and second. Cougs trailing 3-0 here in the bottom of the third. The 0-1 pitch. Fouled back. Strike two. No balls, two strikes, and two outs. BYU just trying to get into the dugout. Let the offense go to work. Two on, two outs. The 0-2 pitch fouled off. Reyes stays alive. No balls and two strikes. Yeah, you need a big out right here, Shep. Got to minimize this damage right here. Walker looks in to Taylor. Sets and now delivers the 0-2 pitch. Lined into right field. 
The runner from second, rounding third. There will be a play at the plate. Sliding in safely is Kyler Castillo. And the Lobos increase their lead to four to nothing with still two outs in the bottom of the third inning. Yeah, up in the count there, way too good of an 0-2 pitch right there. Missed it about thigh high. He was able to get out in front of it and just pull it into right field for another RBI. In Eastern Walker's day is done. Head coach Mike Littlewood makes the call to the bullpen to take a break. Pitching change for the Cougars. It's 4-0 Lobos on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Welcome back to Santa Ana Star Field. The BYU Cougars find themselves down 4 0 in the bottom of the third inning. The new pitcher, number 19, Bryce Robeson, the righty from Las Vegas. 6'1, 175 freshman, Bryce making his fifth appearance, has a record of 1-0, and an ERA of 0. He's pitched 8 and a third, giving up 6 hits, no runs, 5 walks, and 6 strikeouts. And Bryce comes into the game with 2 outs and runners on the corners facing the shortstop Kimwell Thomas Rivera. 4 runs on 7 hits. And the Lobos also taking advantage of an error by the BYU Cougars for their four-run lead here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, that third run of the inning, actually the second and third. No, yes. which the second and third will be unearned because of that error. The pitch to Thomas Rivera. Misses away, ball one. Lobos leading 4-0. A run in the bottom of the second, and now three so far in the bottom of the third. Robeson delivers the 1-0. Once again away, two balls and no strikes to Kimwell Thomas Rivera. The junior, or rather, yeah, the junior from Carolina, Puerto Rico. BYU basketball wrapping up the regular season tonight. A win locks up the number two seed and a bye all the way to Monday in the WCC tournament. 2-0 pitch. Called strike one inside. Yeah, that better not be a fall asleep game on him. My <laughs> goodness. Don't go to Malibu and blow that game yep. after that huge win last Saturday. Yep, at Pepperdine. Basketball team's been off since the massive win upsetting number two Gonzaga last Saturday. It's also senior day for women's basketball today. 2-1 pitch, swing and a miss. It's now two balls and two strikes to Kimwell Thomas Rivera. A little big spot here, right? Down 4-0. There's a fifth and sixth run out there. You don't want to let those runners score. You want to get back in the dugout and, and try to answer here and stay in this game. The big pitch here by Bryce. Two balls, two strikes, two out, and two on. He balked. He balked. Got a a call a balk and they did a little two out play what's called two strikes two out play first and third where they have the runner at first leave early and you know Bryce is supposed to step off freeze the runner at third and throw it to your second baseman but he flinched and gives up a, a free run there on the balk yeah the runner from third will score the runner at first moving up to second and it's now 5 nothing, New Mexico the count remains two balls and two strikes The 2-2 pitch. Holy cow, umpire. Taylor thought it was strike three and it literally stood up and started walking to the dugout. The home plate umpire. It was a strike. That's why he didn't went make to the a dugout, call. Because it was a strike. Three balls and two strikes. Not quite sure what happened there. And now a full count. Robeson with the payoff pitch. Popped up. McIntyre calls everyone off, moves over from center field and makes the play. The Lobos score four runs in the bottom of the third inning. They now lead 5-0, heading to the top of the fourth here in Albuquerque on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 